Hi, I'm Jennifer Ashley Tepper. And I'm Joe Iconis, and you're listening to The Album Podcast on the Broadway Podcast Network. This episode is about the song Find the Bastard, which is from the musical Blood Song of Love. And on the album, it is performed by the original cast of Blood Song of Love. Find the Bastard is the theme song from the Spaghetti Western rock and roll musical. And uh, I think it also really encapsulates a lot of my feelings about uh, art and family in general. So uh, listen for uh, a, a nice deep conversation about all of those things also um yeah a very exciting thing to listen to if you've enjoyed the album and really thought about why the songs appear in the order that they do and how um you know the album relates to the iconis and family live shows Mm -hmm. yeah this is a good one Let's talk about Find the Bastard. I like how you um, said those words, very clear. I'm, I try to speak clearly and eloquently. <laughs> um, it's really a beautiful thing that this album, which is very much, you know, made up of songs that are not from musicals, like, the, you know, it's there's so many standalone songs on the 44 track album. Um, but there's this like really special moment near the end of the album where there are several songs from musicals that get, you know, featured back to back. Um, there's we haven't gotten to the last track yet, but the four songs before the last track are two songs from the Black Suits and then two songs from Blood Song of Love. Was that, you know, can you talk about why you chose to do it that way? Um, I think that I think that it's uh, I don't I you know I don't I don't think I specifically chose to you know kind of like dead end the the track list of the album in selections from these two musicals but I think thematically it just kind of made made sense um and uh you know I think it's like it's yeah you know whether it was like a subconscious thing or what I don't know but um I feel like you know it's all good it, it feels so much like as much as it's specifically about the characters in the black suits, it feels like a larger story. It feels like it's really connected to um, me and the people I work with and my own thoughts on music and family and art and all that stuff. And, um, and so it felt, it felt like a, you know, a culminating kind of song and like, and, um, and, and so it just sort of felt natural to put it, you know, towards the end. And then energy wise, it kind of felt like, oh, find the bastard as much as lyrically. It's so much, uh, you know, tied to Blood Song of Love. It also, you know, is is about being on a mission. And it's, you know, and it, it's another one that feels really tied to like the larger ideas of my myself and my family. But then it's like, you know, just personally, Black Suits and Blood Song were such formative experiences for me. And I've I've met so many, you know, people through those shows who've, you know, been the, you know, people who are closest to me in my whole entire life that it's it just kind of like it felt it felt inevitable. I feel like the end of the album is just like this absolute, uh, you know, like circus of 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 love and, <laughs> and people and shows. Um, and it feels like, you know, it's like the album's version of like Kumbaya, like people sitting around a campfire, you know, crying and, and singing songs to each other. Um, and, and so uh, Find the Bastard uh, is the I call it the theme song of a Blood Song of Love, Blood Song of Love, which is my rock and roll spaghetti Western musical that played Ars Nova in 2010. And um, and, uh, you know, Blood Song is is inspired by the Spaghetti Western movies like uh, um, like Once Upon a Time in the West and um, and Fistful of Dollars and The Good, the Bad, the Ugly. Uh, and and in Blood Song, uh, the lead character, um, the sort of Clint Eastwood type is not like a man who's, you know, who's on a mission to, you know, to 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 win the money you know, that's in the bank of the town or he's not really on a mission to like, you know, do a lot of the other 
um, you know, the politically motivated or criminally motivated things that often happen in spaghetti westerns. Um, but he's a uh, he is a musician, and uh, he is you know traveling on the road, forged by his 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 heart and his his brain and his guts and uh, his 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 life and his and his and his beloved have been taken away from him, and so he's on this mission to uh, to to get his his woman back uh, from the clutches of Lou Cocagio, who's his sworn enemy, uh, who is a, a an artist, a musical artist, who is the exact opposite of the musician. Lou Cocagio is corporate and and uh, and dastardly and evil, and the musician is is good and pure. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And so I find the bastard is like his, uh, his theme song and, um, and yeah. And as much as it's like about the stuff that blood song is about, uh, it's, you know, it feels like autobiographical to me. <laughs> it feels as autobiographical as any other thing I've ever written in the show. Blood song find the bastard comes at the end of this very long opening sequence that tells the whole backstory the origin story, if you will, of the musician. And um, and it's like we hear the refrain, I'm going to find the bastard, get my woman back and be with her again beneath the setting sun. We hear that refrain a couple times throughout the course of this, what's like an almost 20 minute sequence. And then we finally get the full song at the end of the sequence. And um, and here on the album, it's sort of just that ending, uh, you know, full song. Um, and it's a song that we do in concert uh, quite a bit because, uh, yeah, it just feels like it's uh, it feels like it's, uh, you know, it's a bot and it uh, it's a, yeah, a connector in some way. It's also interesting to me because, you know, much to my chagrin, like we've never been able to do you've never done like a 44 song concert. So in figuring out the best order, like artistically for the songs on the album, um, you know, they're not necessarily coming in concert order or anything like that. But towards the end, it sort of seems like, oh, like because the emotional core of so many of the concerts is um made up at the end by last on land and by it mm -hmm. you know maybe it's all good um it's sort of like the album is more mirroring a live concert towards mm -hmm. the end of it um yeah i mean did you think like oh sort of like the beginning of the album also sort of starts out like you might start out a concert and then the end but like did you give any thought to that yeah i think that it's i i think that i um uh, I I naturally respond to uh, set lists, whether it's a live thing or a or a, a recorded thing that um, that start out with a a bit of an explosion in some way, and uh, and then have a lot of peaks and valleys throughout, and then um, rev up into a another explosive ending. Uh, I like a I like a big start and a big finish. And so I think that that's just where my my um, my, uh, you know, inner inner compass takes me always. Um, but on album, because the production of the tracks uh, felt so tied to the studio, you know, one of the things that we wanted to do on this album that we've talked about so much is that we didn't want to make it feel like a live album. We didn't want to make it feel like, you know, someone going into to 54 or Joe's pub and, and hitting record. Um, as much as I love live albums, live albums, it's just like, you know, there's all of my, all of these songs have existed solely as live recordings. And so people know them from the you know from the the performances that were that happened you know in in rooms and so this felt the album felt like an opportunity to like actually do purposeful arrangements and do things um to get the like you know the official versions of these songs down uh, to do things that we that we simply can't do live you know that we you know we can't have a, a whole string section or a horn section or or a hundred singers um however I always knew I wanted the album to capture the spirit of a live show and the uh, eclecticism of a live show. Um, and so the more we like worked on tracks and the more the track list solidified, the more it became exciting to think of the album as a whole by the end, kind of like wearing itself down and devolving into a live show. <laughs> and so like those last few songs, you know, we even sort of added 
the sounds of the cast uh, talking, like before a couple of the songs, like um, Amphibian goes right into It's All Good with like chatter, which goes right into Find the Bastard with some chatter, um, which is literally like the it's the cast of the original cast of Blood Song of Love, just like, mm -hmm. you know, talking to each other um, because it, I think we wanted it to feel like, OK, you know, we're in a studio and and we're this isn't a live stage thing, but like there are still human beings in this studio and we're still, um, you know, this this family uh who is you know who is together and heartfelt and rowdy and passionate and all those things and so we wanted to like uh you know drop the pretense a little bit at the end of the at the end of the album and so i like that it kind of like turns into something that could sort of be confused for a live album by the end mm -hmm. you talked about this um you know the fact that it is the original cast of blood song of love and you know as far as songs that are sung by multiple singers go i feel like find the bastard is almost always always led by eric william morris but to mm -hmm. have you know the full original cast back to sing this um is really special i think you know that show obviously meant so much to so many people who got to see it and then the song find the bastard is always just like a very thrilling rousing number in concert when the audience is like singing along um as far as a song like this did you ever think like oh and in, in order to do this in concert or you know put it on an album i would need to change some of the lyrics to be less specific to the show like i know that eventually you know you you didn't and i think everyone is happy about that and likes you know feeling like it's straight from the musical but is there ever a time when you thought like oh i should change this so um people who don't know who violetta is <laughs> are hearing like you know, something that gives them more context because it's out of the context of the musical. Have you considered that with this song or any of the songs on the album? Yeah, I mean, I, I considered it for for most of them. Um, but I think, honestly, you know, the when I was deciding the songs, the you know, in the song selection process, I think I was gravitating towards songs where I wouldn't need to do that. You know, I, I did it for a couple, but really very few. I think I really tried to choose songs that could exist on their own, you know, and and like we've talked about, like these these songs are theater songs, you know, they're they're influenced by pop music or rock music or all different genres of music. But like all of them are theater songs, you know, all of them are songs that could not be confused for songs that you would, you know, like here on the radio or like or you know here as performed by like a major recording artist and so i think the specificity of them it's it's you know it's it's understood it's for it's forgiven and so like you know uh, uh the even songs that were written to be a self-contained thing like ammonia or kevin or whatever it's still a lot of information for people to take in but i think they um they you know they'll go with it as long as the song you know plays by its own 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 rules um and and is and is a satisfying experience from start to finish and so like for something like find the bastard i definitely think we're like pushing the limits of what people will take in for a, a song from a musical that is is out of context but um you know i think i know from concerts that for some reason it's a song that people just understand without um without needing a whole lot of of explanation and i think because even though he's, you know, he's dropping names and saying Violetta, it's like we get this character, we get who he is, we get what he wants. And even though it's really specific what he wants, we can, you know, apply it to our own lives. I think it's really easy to see everything in the song as a metaphor. And um, and I think because of that, the specificity of it uh, all of a sudden makes it universal. I think it also really helps that um, within, you know, the genre of the song, like the it's so focused in on the musician at the very beginning and you really get his objective. And then, you know, we hear it over and over. It's like musical theater 101. It's really um, clear what the central point of the song is so that even if you're like, oh, I need to go look up Blood Song of Love and, and find out what they were talking about there, you do get what the song is about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And I also like that it's mysterious, you know? <laughs> I think that it's like I, 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 I feel like in you know in in theater, musical theater specifically, there's always this, um, there's always this pressure, or at least there has been, you know, for me to like over explain things or to make everything like, you know, to answer every question and to to you know make sure that 
um, an audience is always 100% clear about what's going on. And so I think that I've, in my my writing in general, really tried to um, really tried to to hone in on this idea of like I I never want to confuse the audience, but I I like the idea of um, have let, letting there be some mystery sometimes. Yeah. And so I think that this is a great example of that. And just a great song. The only song in existence that I ever considered getting a tattoo based on a lyric from. <laughs> so congratulations to Find the Bastard. I do not have that tattoo, but I did think about it. There's always time. <laughs> it ain't over till it's over. <laughs> hey. Thanks so much for listening or watching to my podcast. Uh, do me a favor and go to wherever you just listen to or watch this thing and subscribe or like or give us a great rating or review and then head to bpn.fm slash album to find out even more information about this podcast, more ways to watch, more ways to listen and check out my album, Album. Thanks so much for hanging out. Album Podcast is executive produced by Liz Armstrong. Produced by Dory Berenstein, Alan Seals, Kim Garris, and the rest of the team at the Broadway Podcast Network. Be sure to visit bpn.fm slash album for both audio and video versions of this podcast and to listen to album. Album.